Hey guys, I was on the internet and a sweet lady was giving away some um, free plants. I believe these are water lettuces. They multiply like crazy. Um, she gave me a whole bunch. She also gave us some um, other plants. So the fish will love them. We'll have some in the pond outdoors and it was pretty cool. So David, looks like I find you working today. What are you doing, buddy? I am trying to catch Corydoras. So, in the last video, you saw that we put a pair of angels in a 29 all by themselves. Okay. But my angels don't like eating any food off the bottom, and as I'm trying to breed them, I'm feeding that tank heavier than I probably should be. So, I'm gonna catch about eight Corydoras that I've bred in this um, 43, and I'm gonna put them downstairs in the angel tank so they will eat any of the uneaten food that's landed on the bottom, but they will not eat the angel fish eggs. And also they act as a really nice dither for the angels. So if they start being aggressive with each other, then they will start chasing the quarries instead of the other angel. This tank is definitely due for a good cleaning. And I'm also gonna clean the tank while I'm here. Well, the water's not dirty, is it? Uh -huh, it's, it's just the, the front glass that's really dirty. Who else is in here? Um, about three or four dozen African cichlid fry from Ohio Fish Rescue. So these guys are probably going to get an upgrade in the basement. How big do these guys get when they're fully grown? We believe that they are um, peacocks. They might be half. So we are, we're thinking that around the six to eight inch range. So we're going to probably set up a 90 gallon for them. In okay, I'm recording. So I believe we're going to set up a 90 gallon for the African cichlids that are in here. And then I'm gonna put the OB Peacock cichlid fry that we got in a later video also in that tank with them. So we'll have her like 60 or 70 in that tank. And then I'm gonna thin out it. And then I'm gonna take all of the really nice females and I'm gonna put them in a breeding tank with a few of the nicer males. And then it's just gonna be a male only tank. So this is the angel fish tank so you can see that our pair of um angels are there we believe they're just kind of mutt angels but they have laid eggs for us before and they were some signs of breeding behavior in our community tank so we put them down here and you see them looking at the quarry so the quarries are a little school hopefully and they will be a good dither fish for the angels and they also won't eat the angels eggs hopefully and they'll clean up the bottom what size tank was that? I forget. Upstairs, we have them in a little bit bigger than a 40 gallon. And down here, we're putting them into a 29 gallon. And there are all 10 of them go. So why did you let them go so quickly? Because the temperatures of the tanks match. Almost identically. It's all the same water. Uh, it's the same water and I mean, the test kit shows that everything is the same and the temperature is the same. So they just went in, they are gonna do good. So what substrate is this? Cause I get told by lots of people that you can't put corridors on certain substrates. So that is true for some species of uh, their barbells might get um, cut up with some substrates. So in here we have a clay substrate for plants it takes nutrients out of the water and puts it into the substrate for our Amazon storage and things that feed heavily from their base. And I want to say it's like an eco soil, but they're on that and their ball, or bells are doing good. And then we just moved some into our 150 that have all their barbells and they're on sand. Let's see if you can see. Oh, the 150's flared up nicely. You can actually see my reflection at oh, Look at that. And you can see all There's the fish in here. Oscar from yesterday. And uh, you can see the Severums out front, the cichlids, the... Everyone is out front doing great. You can see the pike there. Pike And the parrots are right there in the back. There's the little jag. Oh, uh, the little Oscars in the top corner. All doing good. Where's the... You say the bike car looks hiding up here. Oh, uh, the two bike cars are in there. There's one of the... But the quarries, we have them on a sand substrate. All their bile bio are doing good. We have them, and we have them in this tank over here that has a gravel substrate. And if you look back here with the camera, you can see all of the quarries back there. You can see three or four of them have 
they're barbells and they're nice and long. And if you look over here at those three quarries, you can see their barbells on the front. Those are like little whisker things. You can see how long they are. And this isn't that, and so you don't want to keep them on a sharp substrate because they lay on the bottom a lot and you don't want them to get cut. But uh, sand is always best, but you can keep them on gravel and clay and things like that. Just, I don't use slate with my quarries because I don't, this slate sometimes is sharp. But everything else seems to work pretty good for them. And you can see the ones that we just added into the 29 already are trying to find food in the bottom. We've got to hide in the background pit. Uh-huh. That's just a cool opal garami. When you have a 40 gallon to an opal garami in the corridors. Yep. 